Universe 7, Planet Vampa, the climate on the Vampa planet was completely unbearable. The high temperatures made it difficult to stay there. The creatures that inhabited that place were desperately looking for some liquid to hydrate themselves and survive. At a certain point on the planet, there were two creatures similar to giant spiders looking for their morning meal. In times past, they went out to make this journey on their own, although now they look for their food in a group due to the powerful alien that was living on the same planet. Both creatures were walking as normal without caring much about the hostile heat that took over the area. They were already used to these high temperatures anyway. Out of nowhere, the earth began to shake suddenly and inexplicably. The colossal spiders began to lose their temper. Balance, suddenly one of them would fly quite far away due to a strong impact that he could not identify. The remaining creature, upon closely observing the cause of this, would be extremely scared. It was that strange inhabitant that lived on your planet. He had a human shape. He had a muscular complexion and was also tall, but all the scars on his body stood out, which were signs of the hard battles he had in his life. He had black hair and eyes. His clothing consisted of a kind of green tunic on his waist, violet pants, black combat boots as well as the wristbands he wore. Before the creature could defend itself, that guy had already thrown a sphere of energy in the direction of one of its legs, which ended up tearing it off. Many golden colored fluids came out of it that were supposed to be blood. The black haired man took that limb that was amputated and then left at full speed, leaving that spider helpless to its fate. Cave in a mountain the black haired man was arriving at a kind of shelter that was set up near a small cavern in a large mountain. On his shoulder he carried that limb that he took from the creature, while that yellow liquid fell onto the ground. Maybe it is not the most delicious food in the world, but it will serve to survive. When you get inside that cave, you would see that it was not completely empty, since in the center of it was built a house of considerable size with a gray color with several boxes around it. Two short people with a thin complexion would emerge from it, one denoted being male with orange skin with a wool cap on his head, and the other was female with green skin, with white hair and violet eyes. They both wore coats to avoid cold storms. They would leave the house when they heard someone open the door and enter the shelter. At first they thought they were from the army of the tyrant evil emperor, but when they saw that it was their friend, they breathed a sigh of relief. Ugh, it was you Broly. We thought the men from Frieza had already arrived, and... I see what you brought. Your unique food. The woman would speak to him upon being recognized as Broly with enough peace of mind, but when he saw that food he felt like vomiting. Broly would sit near them, and then proceed to cut that leg into pieces, and give a part to his new friends, who received it. But they weren't quite sure they wanted to digest it, I will never eat that chili again. It's very ugly. The violet-skinned being would speak to his companion recognized as Chilai, who turned to look at him with annoyance. There, don't be a girl and eat Limo, that's all we have until Goku arrives. The green-skinned woman would scold her Limo friend, making him sigh in resignation, not every day they could have good food. Broly, upon hearing that name, would stop abruptly and leave his food for a moment. Goku. That was the name of his new friend that he got after his not-so-friendly visit to Earth, although he has forgiven him for that incident. He still felt a little guilty for having hit him and his companion called Vegeta, who, from what he could find out, was the prince of his race, the Scions. After the incident that occurred on planet Earth, his new friend came almost every day to fight with him. He even started training him. Let his fury not blind him in combat, and to tell the truth, the fruit of his training left him more than surprised. He no longer lost his mind when he got angry, now he could fight with all his strength and be conscious. Although to achieve that, his master Goku had to endure a few blows and beatings when he got out of control, although it was worth it, totally worth it. And always after fighting and training they ate with their two little friends Chilai and Limo, even though at first they treated him in a hostile way, in the end they ended up accepting it and the five ended up being very close. That really made him feel very happy, and since the time he lost Ba, he had never felt that feeling. But something happened these last few days, his friend Goku had not appeared. At first I thought it was some inconvenience he had, but it's been five days since the last time he came. And he knew that was not normal. Is something wrong, Broly? I notice you're a little worried. The woman in the group noticed that her friend was not drinking that yellow liquid that he had brought. Normally he would swallow it all in a few seconds, but now he wasn't even halfway. Yes, 
Broly, if you don't eat your food, you will become weak. The orange skin being he would talk to the scion, encouraging him to eat his food or whatever. It's just... I don't know. Haven't you noticed something strange? The black-eyed man would ask his little companions who they looked at each other with doubt. M. No. Everything remains the same. The unbearable weather. The horrible food. Nothing out of the ordinary. Limo would speak, receiving a nudge from his friend. No. I'm not referring to the planet. Goku hasn't come in a week. It's something very strange. Broly would explain, making his companions understand, and now that they thought about it carefully, his great friend was right. The scion from the earth had not come to see them for a long time. Quite strange, since he always warned when he was not coming or when he would be absent. Maybe he just had some matters to attend to with his family. Remember that a few weeks ago his wife died. Limo would speak with the intention of making the person think. Scion about that possibility, but to tell the truth he was not entirely sure. No, it must be something else. I'm sure, my instinct never fails. Hey, how long until let's go away? The tall being would ask. Sheila would see the boxes that were left around the house, and would think for a moment. Mm -hmm, mm, if the calculations don't fail me. I guess we will leave in about four hours, although we still don't know where to take refuge without Frisia finding us. The white-haired girl would explain, she never failed in her assumptions, and this wouldn't be the first time. Well, I think I know where we can go. The black-eyed man would see how his two friends looked at him in surprise, because for days they had been discussing the destination to travel. And, where do you want to go, Broly? The being of orange skin would ask with genuine curiosity, apparently his scion friend was very enthusiastic about his idea. We'll go to Earth. Shinobi World, country of waves in the middle of a thick fog you would see a large bridge where two simultaneous battles would be taking place. The atmosphere in that place was very tense. The bloodlust could be felt for miles around. Each person gave their best to survive, although both were fighting for something, and that was the destiny of the country of waves. One of the battles was between the two Jinin of Team 7 Naruto and Sasuke who were fighting against the hunter they had seen days ago, the same one who saved Zabuza on that occasion. The three were inside an ice dome that resembled mirrors. Katan, Gukaku no Jetsu, Fire Style Fireball Jetsu. Sasuke would exclaim and then expel a large fireball from his mouth at one of the hunter's reflections, but nothing would happen. He couldn't even break it. They were quite resistant from the looks of it. It won't work, child. Nothing and no one can destroy these ice mirrors. I am invincible in this place. The hunter would see through the reflections, like Sasuke. He ground his teeth in a sign of annoyance and annoyance when he saw that he couldn't even break said mirrors. He felt completely useless in the situation. But something that caught his attention the most was seeing his rival Uzumaki quite calm. As if all this were normal. That's enough Haku, that's enough Naruto would speak calmly and seriously, earning a gasp of astonishment from the ninja inside the mirrors, and a confused look from the Uchiha, who didn't understand anything. Bah, bah, but, how? The brunette did not understand how that blonde ninja discovered his identity, he never told anyone, he even changed his voice slightly to go unnoticed. But I couldn't fool that child, he was completely crazy. I had already told you that day. I'm not an idiot. I can feel your energy. I'm a sense of the blue-eyed guy who was talking to complete seriousness, something that left the Uchiha somewhat confused. Well, his friend never behaved like that. That masked man would come out of the mirrors, removing his mask, leaving the black-haired man even more confused who did not understand how those two knew each other. You know I have to do it, Naruto. I have no choice. These are Zabuza-sama's orders. He is my owner and I am just his tool. I must obey. Haku would see how Naruto would frown at such a response. Something greatly bothered him. I could tell in that look. So this is the way you protect your loved one? By being nothing more than a puppet that he can throw away whenever he wants. Haku, please, this is not right. You are much more than a simple weapon. You are a damn person. You have rights and feelings like all of us. Haku would open his eyes in surprise. No one had spoken to him that way in years, since, since his mother's death. But, but, you. I don't. I can, he tried to deny it. 
He tried to close his heart, but it would not end when he saw how the Uzumaki touched his shoulder and gave him one of those radiant smiles capable of illuminating the darkest path. Haku, I know you're afraid. I know you have doubts, but this is not right. You are a great person, someone to admire. Maybe you haven't had an easy life. Unfortunately, in this world, nothing can be simple, but if you come with me, I could help you and Zabuza. I could give you that affection that perhaps you are still looking for in a person. Maybe it is not your dad or your mom, but we will be like brothers, the best brothers that can exist. Just let yourself love Haku. Naruto would hug the brunette, who would not know how to act or how to react. It has been a long time since I felt that heat in his chest. Towards it was a long time since he felt his heart so cold. To warm up and beat as fast as now. Without being able to avoid it, his eyes shed a solitary tear that expressed all his pains and sadness accumulated throughout his short life, and with trembling hands he responded to Naruto's gesture. In a tender scene for anyone, maybe Naruto was right. He was a human being too, for a few moments behind that smiling boy. He saw the figures of his parents, maybe, maybe. He would free him from his torment. Meanwhile, Sasuke remained dazed in his place watching the scene. He did not believe that his partner knew the renegade ninja, much less that they were friends. When did this happen? I needed an explanation later. When separating from the hug, Haku would tell his story to the two genin, the massacre and the war in the country of water, the death of the people who had Kekia Genkai, bloodline, and finally the death of his family at the hands of his own father. The two members of Team 7 would understand the pain of the words in the boy, especially Sasuke. Since they both shared a very curious similarity, the death of a loved one at the hands of another, without a doubt the boy was very strong because of everything he had to go through being just a defenseless and innocent child. Suddenly that dome full of crystals would break into millions of pieces, causing small snowflakes to fall slowly. Leaving the three confused, wasn't this place supposed to be indestructible? The boys would see Jiren and hit far away, who had his fist raised and clear evidence that he was the one who broke the windows. Haku was with his mouth open, that guy. He destroyed his most powerful technique with just a simple blow. So here they were. The assassin would see the three young people who would see him somewhat surprised and stunned for breaking the glass with one blow. To tell the truth, he could break it just by expelling key. But he didn't want to draw the attention of strangers, at least not yet. At that moment Haku would feel that Zabuza was in trouble, and with a sunshine he would go to save him, no wanted to lose him. He wasn't going to let him die, even if he had to give up his life in the process. Zabuza would live. Oh no! We have to stop Haku before he does something stupid. The blonde would exclaim worried about his new friend. He was sure he would do something crazy, but he would see Jiren and hit quite calm. With the matter, something quite strange, things, although I couldn't help but feel a slight concern. At another point on the bridge, you would see Izabuza completely immobilized by some ninja dogs that were holding each of his limbs, and a Kakashi with his hand wrapped in electricity ready to end the life of the Mist Swordsman once and for all, while on the other end was Sakura protecting Tizuna. Raikiri, lightning blade, Kakashi would run to finish the job definitively, but a few meters away from impacting the attack, that Umbu who was no longer wearing his mask would intervene, leaving Zabuza and the same silver-haired man surprised, who to bad luck would no longer be able to stop his technique, and he would hope not to kill the boy in the process, before impacting his hand on the young man's chest. It would be completely stopped by another well-known to him. Mr. Goku, what's the meaning of this? The copying ninja would be between angry and relieved by the sudden appearance of Goku. On the one hand, he would be grateful for helping him avoid the death of the chestnut. But on the other hand, he was quite confused by his presence in this place. While the ninja dogs would disappear in a cloud of smoke to return to their lands and regain strength. They are no longer our opponents, Kakashi. Look over there. Goku would point somewhere else, making the three look at the targeted place. Hundreds of thugs would approach their position with many weapons of all kinds, ready to attack, and in front of them would be a man of short stature who seemed to be the leader of that entire gang. So the great Zabuza of the Mist Village failed his job. Well, it doesn't matter, after all. I had planned not to pay you anything and kill you to save myself inconvenience. Gato would say with malice towards his contractor, really, there was little or nothing to him. The life of his assistant mattered. He only wanted money and he would get it at any cost. I guess, 
We are no longer enemies, Kakashi. Zabuza would express to the wielder of the Sharingan tiredly, he would not deny that the fight left him exhausted and almost without chakra, therefore he had nothing to defend himself with. What a humiliating way to die! That's right, but unfortunately I no longer have chakra to fight or defend myself. Kakashi would sigh from exhaustion because he no longer had energy, that last Raikiri plus the Sharingan left him completely melted. I will take charge. Goku would seriously look at to all the bullies. They would not let any of them get close to their friends. He was not going to allow it. I don't think you have enough strength, Mr. Goku. There are too many for you. I recommend that you stay away. Kakashi would not have knowledge of the strength of the Scion raised on Earth, so he would have certain doubts about letting the sun fight. Don't worry, I'm strong. I can take care of them, Goku I would say with serenity and confidence about his strength. After all, dealing with things much worse than simple bandits along of his entire life as a warrior. Kill everyone but bring me the girl, maybe I can use her in future businesses. The tycoon would say looking at Sakura, she would give a look of complete disgust. That old man he was a complete madman, but to his relief, his companions Naruto and Sasuke came to his side. I won't allow it. Goku would watch as those guys would run up to him waving their weapons with the intention of killing him. But the Scion with his monstrous speed would disappear from everyone's sight without a trace. Even the bandits stopped abruptly when they lost sight of their target. Team 7 would watch somewhat dazed as the thugs would fall one by one and they, they couldn't see anything when everyone was completely unconscious. The black-haired man appeared in front of Cat who was amazed and scared by how his men fell like sacks of potatoes without any effort, plus that strange man was looking at him. Not at all pleasant. You don't deserve to be forgiven for the crimes you damn committed. Goku would look angrily at the tycoon who was begging for mercy almost on his knees, but the scion wasn't going to have it this time. Tizona told him the sad truth of his people, and that thanks to this guy they were in misery, and the warrior was not going to let him leave alive, he would not let him continue ruining more lives ever again. The scion would extend his hand with the palm open to Cat's face who was already crying from fear and panic, reaching out with his right hand, he would create a sphere of key, leaving the Kanoa down and stunned, thinking that this man had managed to master the fourth. Hokage's Technique and then throw it at the little bandit and thus be able to end his life forever. Gato would begin to scream in agony and would begin to disintegrate thanks to the attack of the jet, leaving everyone speechless those present for such a technique never seen before. He didn't even use hand positions. When it was all over, Goku returned with the team with a big relaxed smile, ignoring the comically surprised faces of all the shinobis. It's finally over. These people will have what I always hoped for, a new tomorrow, they deserve it. The Scion would express clearly happy, to see that finally the country of waves, would stop being under the tyranny of the tycoon and they could be free once and for all. Minutes after all that conflict, all the people of the village led by Inari, Hit and Jiren were arriving with sticks and torches to finish off Gato. The two warriors from Universe 6 and 11 guided them to where Son Goku's key was, but they would be a little disappointed to see that the Scion had already finished off the tyrant. Although in the end everyone screamed with happiness when they saw that they were finally free from the evil businessman and could get out of the darkness in which they were immersed, starting today, it would be a new beginning for the country of waves. Dimensional crack in a place completely full of dimensions in the form of floating purple crystals, two shadows were carefully observing one in particular. In it the three most powerful mortals of the twelve universes could be identified along with the Kanoa Shinobi in a pleasant conversation on the bridge of the Land of Waves. Oh wow, this will get more complicated than it should. Don't you think so? The smallest shadow would ask him to his companion, but he only ignored that comment since he was looking carefully at the scion of the seventh universe, Son Goku. He seemed like a very interesting guy. Well, that's at least. It's time for you to enter the scene, don't you think so, Bardock? From the darkness a third figure would appear, revealing his appearance. He was wearing completely black combat armor, with brown and red details. The most striking thing was his hair very similar to that of that scion Goku, and that white mask that covered his face. Although his eyes were visible in a very bright red color, he was ready to fulfill the assigned mission, and no would fail. Universe 7, Sidereal Space The Infinite Stars adorned the infinite space of Universe Number 7. 
accompanied by multiple planets that were distinguished by their particular shapes and size. Each one was differentiated from the other by some particularity. The vast suns and meteorites they accompanied the surroundings, leaving an unbeatable vision. At an exact point in the vast space, a ship of considerable size was lurking in the surroundings. At first glance it looked like a very advanced and unknown technology. It was supervising the zones and planets that were in its orbit with an unknown objective. Inside the ship to the interior was made of the same material as the exterior, technology of a very high caliber and level that would make those of the earth itself look ridiculous. There were also soldiers with armor who ran from one place to another carrying out duties and orders from their superiors to, to be able to successfully complete the assigned mission. In the main cabin there were three beings supervising the course of the ship. Two were very short in stature. One of them were a yellow-skinned man with bulging eyes. The other was a woman with blue skin and violet hair. The third guy was taller than the other two and was sitting in the main seat. His skin was yellow. A white color with violet details, in addition to having a long tail that characterized it. Lord Frisia, they informed us that this Broly and the traitors are heading to Earth. Shall we intercept the ship? The yellow-skinned being would speak with the utmost respect to the one recognized as Frisia, the truth after the attack that occurred months ago on planet Earth. It was his mission to discover the whereabouts of those traitors so he could manipulate them and use them in future battles to come, and finally today could be the day. No Kakono, let them go, they are no longer needed. The white-skinned being would speak to his subordinate known as Kakono who would nod his head in approval. Confirmation. But, but, then, how will I get the Dragon Balls? The small humanoid would ask with genuine curiosity, since they were now letting their great weapon go. Power. He, isn't it obvious? I will go for them myself. There will be nothing and no one to stop me and I will be the tallest in the universe. Frieza would exclaim with a triumphant smile as he imagined his new shape and height that he would have after making his wish to those magical spheres. Immortality was already in the background. The demon of the cold thought that appearance was the most important right now. To be honest, he could no longer stand the mockery of his own subjects regarding his height. It was unbearable. And... What will we do with Son Goku, my lord? Kikono would ask, and then get scared when she saw the sudden change in the Emperor's face. He went from a face of joy to one of complete anger and contempt in a matter of seconds. Once I get my new body, I plan to kill it right there. I am the only one who can eliminate it. It has always been a dream that will soon come true. This way I will also save myself the trouble in the future. Ho ho ho. The Emperor of the Universe would leave his angry face to proceed to laugh with his classic laugh, while his servants thought that their master was a little bipolar due to such sudden mood swings. Absence The cold demon would get off his seat and head towards the exit of his ship, being followed by both small beings who were his most reliable soldiers. But, but... Don't you want us to take him, sir? The yellow-skinned being would ask when he saw his master preparing to go alone. It's not necessary. If we all go, it would draw a lot of Goku's attention, and we don't want that, right? The evil emperor would ask remotely, ready to leave. If you have reason, sir, I beg your pardon. The yellow being would give a small bow as a sign of apology. His master was very intelligent. Very well. I will return in a few days. Do not disappoint me, Bear Blue. And with that said, the great Frisia left his ship, and at full speed he flew towards planet Earth, ready to fulfill his wish and eliminate his annoying arch-rival son Goku. Don't worry, great Frisia. I will not fail you. The woman would speak while breaking out a big smile on her face. Planet Earth, Capsule Corporation the day on planet Earth in Universe 7 was not going through its best moment. Lord Beerus, the god of destruction, had suddenly arrived on the planet again, irony and coincidence to another Bulma's birthday party. The woman thought that her birthday only brought problems. Now her best friend Goku, he had disappeared, and no one had the slightest idea where he was. It's like he had left this dimension or something. And the most terrifying thing was that he wasn't in any of the eleven remaining universes. There was no whereabouts of him. Bulma and Lord Beerus were the most upset about this. Something wasn't right. Let me see if I understand. You mean that Kakarot is nowhere to be found? Jesus is ridiculous. 
It is impossible for him to disappear out of nowhere. The prince of the science was with his arms crossed trying to understand the words and explanation of the deities. You must believe us, Vegeta. Goku was training as usual when such an event occurred. To this day it seems very suspicious to me. The angel of the seventh universe would say thoughtfully, leaving everyone surprised. Suspicious? Bulma would ask, returning herself. Now she had to be focused and help find her friend. That's right. I don't know any being with that ability in the vast multiverses. It's something curious. Wiz would explain in detail. Seriously, and then cast his gaze on the young man from the future. Putting it something uncomfortable. Oh my. You traveled back in time again. What the angel said would draw the attention of the destroyer god who would leave his concern aside to observe Trunks. Hey! I didn't tell you that time travel was forbidden. Do you want them to destroy? The violet skinned being would shout while pointing at them accusingly. Trunks, upon seeing that god so angry, would run towards him to get on his knees. Eh. No, no. A thousand apologies, sir. God, my mother invited me to her party before I returned. And I could not refuse. I beg you to forgive my parents. The young man with the sword would scream comical while he was on his knees, making the Hakatian doubt, although he suddenly remembered that it was thanks to him. That his timeline did not suffer the disaster caused by Black Goku. Hemp, that's fine. This time I'll let it go, just for having helped us find Zamasu. But next time there will be punishment. The god would downplay the matter and begin to think again of a way to find the strongest mortal in Universe 7. I didn't even want to imagine what the great Lord Zeno would do if he found out. As the minutes passed, no one had any idea of where he could the scion being raised on Earth, and the Hakatian's concern wasn't much help either. And from thinking so much he was already giving him a headache until a light would make our protagonists focus on her and when it dissipated a large transparent cube would have manifested making beerus upset to know who the object belonged to oh no the god would take his face with marked annoyance seeing the individuals coming out of that means of transportation he 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 everyone attention the most powerful destroyer god of the 12 universes has just arrived a subject similar to Beerus, only with a more robust body and red clothing, would exclaim with arrogance, approaching the god of the universe Seven and company. What the hell are you doing here, Kampa? The Hakatian would ask him now recognized as Kampa with an angry cry. He was the destroyer god of universe Six and his twin, while both clasped their foreheads as a sign of rivalry. Did you forget, Beerus? Today is the meeting of baseball between the two universes that we had planned months ago. God would exclaim making his brother start to remember something. And in fact he was right. They had agreed on another game today to improve the coexistence between the two twin universes only that the disappearance of Goku had made him forget that issue completely. This is not the time. Shelby, we're pretty busy right now. But Beerus wouldn't be able to speak since someone coming out of the cube would interrupt him. Where the hell are Goku and Gohan? I'm here to face them damn. A woman would exclaim quite angry as she approached where the group was. Vegeta, upon seeing her, would be left speechless upon recognizing her. It was impossible. She should not exist. She should not be here. The woman had dark colored clothing. She also had yellow wristbands and boots, black hair and eyes. In addition to some curious green clay in each ear of her. You are... Kefla. Shinobi world days after the cat incident. Tuzuna and the other villagers of the country of waves finished the bridge calling it. The bridge of hope the village would thank Team 7 and Goku's group for helping them and defending them from the tyrant who kept them prisoners all this time. Thanks to them they could enjoy freedom again, of a new beginning. You can come with us, of course if you don't have a place to go. The Hokage will receive you in the best way, believe me Databeo. Naruto would speak with a bright smile to Zabuza and Haku, who seemed to be discussing something important. After finishing the bridge, the swordsman received a big scolding from Naruto for having used Haku in such a mean way, explaining to him that if he did it again he would have beaten him, the brunette would have responded that there was no need, that he had already learned his lesson, and although he couldn't explain it in words, he really cared about Haku. Something in his heart he told him that he had to protect him and return all the support that Haku had given him a long time ago. 
Those constant worries inside him made him discover his true feelings of fatherhood that he had with the boy. So many years of wandering, the two of them alone in the shinobi world. Already considered the ice user as the son he could never have. Really, really, Lord Zabuza? Haku would not believe what he would hear. The user of the ice element would smile with a few small tears of joy to see that finally then of so many years, he found what he was always looking for, a family, a home. A place to belong, his most desired dream would finally come true. Haku would give him a big hug and he would tell him if he would like to be his son, while the new family was being formed. Naruto would smile calmly for his friend. He knew what he had been through, and he was sure it was with Zabuza. The scars on his heart would close forever. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're leaving. It would be amazing if you guys came with us, you know, to train and you have a place to call home. What do they say? Naruto would ask nervously. He really wanted them to go with him so he could give them a home. He would never bear the idea of leaving them alone and helpless. They weren't mercenaries. To survive a lot. The shinobi world was very difficult these days. I've thought about your offer dwarf, and I guess we'll accept it. We don't have a place to go, and no money either. Can't know he paid us nothing for the work. Zabuza would sigh since they had no choice. It was that or being cold every night in hostile territories every day. And although he hasn't told anyone, the shinobi of the fog were behind their steps. And to be honest, they are a pain in the ass. It would also be entertaining to see how the blonde Gaki grows in his training as a shinobi. The swordsman knew that he had enormous potential, seeing him train these days and the effort he left in them. He knew that he would be a great ninja in a not-too-distant future. Also, who knows, maybe I can teach him in Kenjutsu one day. He never had a disciple. It would be very interesting. Great! Then let's go, now. We are about to retreat towards our village. The Uzumaki would practically drag Zabusa and Haku with him towards the entrance of the town, where his team was gathered together with Goku's group and Mr. Tizuna and his family formalizing their farewells. What a surprise! I'm glad you want to join us, Zabusa. It will be an honor to be colleagues, and I bet you will be very helpful to Kanoha. Well, it was a pleasure to have helped on this mission. Kakashi would say smiling with his characteristic eye smile towards the builder. We thank you with all our hearts. Thank you for freeing us from the cat. If you need any help for something, do not hesitate to ask for it. We will gladly help you. Oh, and have this. It would be an honor for the Leaf Village to be our ally. Tazuna would say with humility and gratitude to his saviors while he gave them a scroll to seal an alliance, while Inari would approach Naruto with sadness. Will I see you again? The little boy would ask the blonde, who smiled slightly at him. In these last days, the two resolved their differences better than expected, and they began to get along much better. They did everything together. They fished. They played. There was nothing they didn't do as a team. To the point that the blue-eyed boy would see the little boy as a little brother, something he always wanted, just, he would have liked it to last a little longer. Of course. I'll come visit sooner, of what they believe. I swear, Dadabeo. Naruto would give his promise, exciting to Zuna's family. They had liked the little Uzumaki, his optimism and hope made him remember a lot of Tsunami's husband, even their smiles were identical, a smile that would always show that hope should never be lost. The large group would say goodbye to everyone and retire to a new direction, to the hidden village among the leaves. They were going at a fast pace to be able to take advantage of what was left of the afternoon. They did not want to waste any more time since the journey to Kanoha was already a bit long. Are we there? Goku would ask with his arms behind his head as they walked. For the tenth time, Mr. Goku, no. We are not there yet. Kakashi would sigh with notable annoyance at the same question coming from the Scion. He believed that Naruto and that man were very similar, since both could be annoying if they wanted to. Out of nowhere the blue sky turned into a dark violet color, leaving the area in a depressing state causing the confusion of the group that was heading towards the leaf. Everyone would hear a strange noise in the heights. When they looked at it they would see that it was a kind of portal, and a silhouette emerged from him that left everyone with shocked faces. It was. Lord Goku but with a strange armor and mask. Everyone, observing that strange subject, would not know what to think, but the three most powerful mortals in the twelve universes, they would feel that guy's key, and they knew that he was not a good person. His heart was contaminated with a kind of very negative energy that made him gain great strength. It can't be, how many guys like me are there in the universes? 
Goku would ask sarcastically, seeing the silhouette of the stranger, he was identical to him, as he was in his time black. It seems that lately all the villains wanted to look like him. Hit and Jiren would see it with doubt, since they did not understand his sarcasm, perhaps there were more guys with the appearance of the Scion from Universe 7. But before they could ask him, they saw how the sun flew in the direction of the masked man, ignoring the surprised and afraid faces of Team 7 when they saw such a flight technique. He, I'm sorry friends, I want it. The raised scion on earth, he would place himself in front of the subject, facing him and preparing for what he deduced would be a combat, since that subject did not seem to want to greet them. Universe 7, Planet Earth, while those events were occurring in the Shinobi world, and the universe of the scions were not going in the best way either, when most of the guests were present. Bulma had to cancel the party due to this. Little inconvenience of her friend, although the Z Warriors stayed in Capsule Corporation to find out why the Blue Annette cancels one of her big parties, among them were Krillin and his wife number 18. Piccolo. Number 17. Gohan and Tenshinhen, as well as some warriors from Universe 6 who came to play the baseball game. So, do you mean that Son Goku has disappeared? A young man in a suit protector of forests would ask with a calm voice and quite interested in that topic. Yes, 17. Just a few moments ago, Lord Beerus told us the news. No one knows where he is. Nor does he know. The woman would explain the details to the android who looked thoughtful, while watching the occasion of Universe 6 and 7 talk to their respective angels. I still can't believe that my father finds. Gohan would clench his fists in a sign of helplessness. He did nothing to protect his father, was feeling quite bad at the moment. Don't worry, Gohan, your father is very strong in itself. I highly doubt that he is dead. Piccolo was trying to encourage his pupil so that he would not he continue to blame himself, something that the young man was very grateful for. There you are, Gohan. That scream would make the black-haired man jump because of the shock he received. And in less than a second he would have that scion that he defeated months ago in the strength tournament organized by Lord Zeno. Um, yes? Kefla, right? Do you need something? Gohan was very nervous when he saw that woman's angry face. I want revenge. It was short and concise. Now he had the opportunity to get revenge and he wasn't going to waste it. Revenge? The semi-scion did not exactly understand the young woman's words. Exactly. The rematch. This time I will win. I will return the humiliation that you gave me in that tournament, and after you I will go for your father. I am sure that I can beat them both. Kefla would exclaim confident of her strength, only to receive a little laughter from Goku's son. What are you laughing at? The scion didn't understand. Was he making fun of her? Excuse me for saying it, Kefla, but you can't beat me. To me, much less will he be able to with my father. He is on a very different level. The black-eyed man would say this with certainty, but when remembering his father he would put on a serious face again. Hey, are you okay? The inhabitant of Universe 6 did not understand Gohan's sudden change in attitude. I do, but my father, he has, disappeared. Son would say looking at the ground. Briefly surprising Kefla, she didn't know that Son Goku had disappeared. Maybe that's why they were so serious in this place. Fence! Hi. I didn't know. The fusion didn't know how to proceed. She felt like a fool right now. She never knew about the old man's disappearance, and to tell the truth she was a little sad since she wanted to demonstrate her strength to him. Don't worry, you didn't know. I just hope he's okay. Goku's son would give a sincere smile to Kefla who internally thanked him for the kind attitude of the old man's son as she called him. While that was happening, the gods were discussing the strange things that happened these last few days in their universe a little away from the rest. And they also talked about the strange disappearance of the scion raised on Earth. Oh my goodness! I hope nothing bad has happened to poor Goku. The Angel of Universe 6 would exclaim worriedly, receiving looks of doubt on the part of their brother like the Destroyer twins. The Kampa assistant would only laugh nervously to ask them kindly to forget her comment. To tell the truth, we are also missing a very important inhabitant in our universe. Kampa would speak thoughtfully, drawing the attention of everyone present. A resident, what are you referring to? Vegeta would ask, curious. 
Perhaps that will help them to know something about Kakarot's whereabouts. Hit has been missing for same time days too. We thought he would be on some of his missions, but he never takes more than three days to complete them. That's why we decided to look for him in the other universes so we could tell him about the baseball game, and there was no trace of him either. The beautiful angel would explain the events prior to this day, leaving everyone again with more doubts than they already had. Apparently someone took Goku and he landed in some strange place, but the main question was, for what? A strange portal would open in the sky, diverting the attention of those present to said place, and the person who would come out of there would leave terrified of both Beerus and Kampa. Grand Priest!